the seven real estate deal killers. You got to stay away from these seven because these will kill your real estate deal. Now, some of them are there, there for good purpose, and I'm going to explain why they're deal killers. But in general, I try not to be a deal breaker. I try to be a deal maker. I try to keep the deal together and keep the best interest of my client there. But sometimes the deal has to die for good reason. But other times they get killed for silly things. So I'm going to break down the good, the bad, the ugly about these seven deal killers and why you need to understand them so that you can complete your real estate transaction when you decide to get in the real estate game. Hey guys, my name is Jay Lehman. I'm a licensed realtor here in Central Illinois and I'm based out of Champaign, Illinois. I also invest in properties to help people buy and sell properties. And I'm gonna break down what the seven deal killers are in real estate transactions. It's gonna bring a lot of value. So would you like and subscribe right now and comment and tell me which deal killer you think makes the most sense and you're most afraid of, or maybe that you've experienced that would really help me get this information out to other people. Okay, so let's get to the seven deal killers. The number one deal killer is inspections or inspectors. Now, I think inspectors are good guys. They're just doing their job job. But when an inspection happens on a house after it gets under contract, usually they're going to go through that house with a fine tooth comb and they're going to offer a 40, 50, 60, sometimes 70 page report of everything that's wrong with that house. Now, most of our nickel and dime issues that a little caulk or a couple nails can figure out, but some of them may be bigger issues. Inspections have their place. Sometimes there's latent material defects that you didn't know about when you walk through. Maybe the foundation shot. Maybe there's pests crawling out of the sink. Maybe there are issues with the roof. Maybe there is a frozen pipe that burst and water is leaking that you didn't know when you walk through. That's what inspectors are really for. But sometimes when a new home buyer gets a home inspection for the very first time and the realtor has not done a good job of prepping their client and saying, hey, you're going to see a lot of different issues on this. I don't want you to worry. Inspectors are paid to go find out everything that's going on with the house. Some are big, some are small, some are meaningless, but let's work through it together. Don't you be overwhelmed. You got to preface it like that. If you don't preface it like that, they will be overwhelmed and say, the very first house I'm buying is a lender. It's not a good house. I don't want to buy it. And there's so much fear tied up with big purchases, especially big real estate transaction purchases. An inspection can absolutely kill a deal. Now, sometimes if there are huge defects and they can't be negotiated to be fixed, then that deal should die if you're on the buyer's side and you're trying to help this transaction and get there. Maybe it's not in their best interest. Again, you're a fiduciary for your buyer and your seller, whoever you're representing. You need to fix some of the items and sometimes you can't come to agreement and the deal dies. Sometimes though, we'll see little items kill a deal because people don't understand these are just little items and they could be fixed easily. The seller would be willing to fix them, but sometimes the buyer's just like, nope, I see what the house really is now and now I'm no longer interested and it absolutely kills the deal. It's frustrating for the buyer. It's frustrating for the seller. It's frustrating for the agents. And the most frustrating thing is it all could have been remedied if we would have prefaced the inspection and worked through it with them in a better way. So inspections are a big deal. Killer. Number two deal killer is financing. That's right, finance. Lenders are great people. They really help real real estate work because without loans, very few people would be able to buy real estate because real estate is expensive. And so we love our lenders, but a lot of the financing can fall through for a buyer when purchasing a property. And when the buyer falls through when purchasing a property because of their financing, it's a pain in the butt because the seller is disappointed. The buyer's disappointed. Everyone's disappointed. There was a lot of work that went into it and nobody's going to get the house. Nobody's going to sell the house and everybody's upset. So why is financing a deal killer? Well, just because someone is pre-qualified or pre-approved, Prove doesn't mean that they're not going to go through a rigorous, rigorous financial analysis once they get that property under contract. So a lender will say, okay, okay based on what you submitted to me about your credit report, uh, I looked up your credit report or your pay stubs or your tax returns, I think you can qualify for this. After they say that, they're going to do a deep dive and underwrite if this person can really pay back this loan. And sometimes stuff will come up that maybe wasn't disclosed in the pre-qualification process that can kill the deal. I once had a property under contract for six weeks and about four days before closing, it came out that the buyer actually had a bankruptcy in their past. And that bankruptcy was a knock against their credit and some other things that they needed to qualify for the loan. And they no longer could qualify. And that home had to go back on the market because that seller without that loan could not get another loan and could not be approved for the amount that it took to purchase that home. So financing is a huge, huge deal killer. And so you've got to make sure working with your 
a little interested. Is this person really rock solid? Have you really dug deep on this? Do you know for sure these people are qualified to purchase this home? And that's not just from a buyer's agent's perspective. A seller's agent should call the buyer's lender as well and verify. Remember, I always trust, but verify. The number three deal killer is the realtor deal killer. Realtors are deal killers. Sometimes they can get too fired up in a transaction and not negotiate in a calm, collective way that will actually get their clients the best result they're looking for. Sometimes realtors do get away. Now, most of the time they don't. They do a great job of what they're supposed to do as a fiduciary, meaning they're acting in the best interest of their client. But other times they can get fired up and get emotional, whether it's inspection item or financing and lose their cool. And sometimes that can turn off one of the agents the wrong way. And the agent's like tells their client, I don't know if you want to work with this agent because this agent is a reflection of these buyers. I don't know if you want to sell this house to these buyers because this agent is making all these different requests and not acting kind and courteous. And so sometimes realtors can actually be a deal killer. That's shocking, I know, but make sure your realtor is calm and collective under pressure because in a high pressure multiple offer situation, sometimes emotions can ride high and the calmer and collective and more knowledgeable your realtor is, the better chance is that your deal will actually come together and you'll get the property of your dream or sell the property that you need to sell. Number four, parents, in-laws. Those people are some of the worst deal killers. You say your clients walk through a house, right? And they love it. They get it under contract. They're super excited. And then they decide, hey, I'm actually going to bring my dad through to come see the property. Or I'm going to bring my father-in-law through and they're going to look at the property. And when they look through the property, all of a sudden, sometimes the dad or the parent or the in-laws can start to question if this is a good purchase or not. Now, it's all in good heart, right? They actually want to protect their kids or in-laws. I understand that. But they are not real estate professionals. They usually don't know the market and they sure aren't professional property inspectors, right? So they don't know about all the things that are okay or not okay. And so they'll interject their opinion. And because most first time home buyers really value the opinion of their parents because their parents have owned homes usually, and they grew up in a home with their parents and they trust their parents or in-laws, they take their word as gold. And when that word is gold, it's really hard to convince them otherwise that maybe their parents could be wrong or stepping over their bounds. So parents can be, and in-laws can be huge deal killers. Number five deal killer is foundation issues. That's right. You can fix a lot about a house. You can fix a furnace. You can fix a roof. You can fix pipes. You can fix almost everything. You can even fix foundation issues. But the problem with foundation issues is this. They cost a ton of money and they don't really add a ton of value to the property. It's one of the worst things that you can have as a foundation issue because if your foundation's crumbling, the whole house can be unstable. You get water in your basement or crawl space. And it's the most expensive, usually, type of repair out there because because you're going to have to anchor walls. You're going to have to replace a lot of the work. You have to excavate around there. But if your foundation is not sound, you cannot sell that house and it will not be a safe house to live in. One time I owned an apartment building. We saw that one of the walls was sagging in. So we had to get all the tenants out because it was like, hey man, this wall looks like it's sagging a little bit. And we had to get foundation person in there, a structural engineer person in there. Long story short, it was over $140,000 repair for this apartment to fix this one foundation wall that water had gotten next to and started to make the foundation bow. Now, the good part is, is that nobody was hurt. We caught it before there was a bigger issue, but it was so expensive. And guess what? After $140,000 of rehab work into the foundation, the property really wasn't worth that much more because people expect the foundation to be solid. So if I can tell you one thing, foundation issues are a deal killer. And that's where a good inspector can actually do their job. Number six deal killer is attorneys. Now, attorneys don't always break out kill deals. But I will tell you this, a lot of times, if you get the attorneys talking back and forth with one another, sometimes it can get a little heated and attorneys can make the deal go south. Remember, I think attorneys, inspectors, financing, they all have their place. But the more cooks you have in the kitchen, the more things you have that can actually go wrong, those can end up killing the deal. And then if an attorney tells their client, I don't like this attorney and how they're acting and how their clients are acting, that holds a lot of weight. More weight a lot of times than what a realtor would say. Sometimes a realtor can't keep the 
deal together and the attorney looking to protect their client kills the deal. Maybe for a good reason, but sometimes it's an overreaction, but not always. Again, these are all just examples. I think inspectors, lenders, attorneys, parents, they all are actually have a good heart when it comes to real estate deals, but they just kill deals sometimes and that's the reality. And then number seven, and this deal killer is a silent one and most people don't think about it, is time. The longer a transaction takes, the better chance is that deal falls apart and is killed because time kills deals. So if you actually want to not get deals killed, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to shorten that time zone as much as you can. Remember, uh, most real estate closings are 30 to 60 days and that's not bad. But if you have, you know, one week closing, that's all cash. There's not that many different factors that could actually affect that deal because there's no financing. And maybe you say, I'm going to buy it as is, no inspection, and you're going to go fast. There's not a lot of stuff that can happen in seven days. But if it's 70 days until you close, well, then there's a lot of things that can happen in 70 days. Well, the financing could fall through. The inspection could have issues. There's more interaction with people, which means there's more chance for conflict. Now, hopefully that doesn't happen. But in reality, I've seen over and over again, the longer a closing date is away, the better chance that deal falls apart, right? Because more stuff can happen. The shorter the closing date is, the better that has a chance to actually closing and the deal being completed and the buyer and the seller being happier. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you want to be a deal maker or do you want to be a deal breaker? I try to be a deal maker. I try not to break deals on my side. I always ask the client and I always ask the other realtor, is there anything we can do to make this deal work that you would feel good about it? If the answer is yes, let's do it. If the answer is no, hey, let's walk away and find another property. It's not like we got to get married this property. There's all kinds of properties out there. So find a realtor that knows how to be a deal maker and not a deal breaker and always fights for your best interest, whether it's an inspector, attorneys, lenders, other realtors, and tries to get it done in a very, very quick, consolidated manner because time kills deals. Now, if this brought value to you, would you like, subscribe? Would you leave a comment below? Because that lets everybody know about Jay Lehman and real estate in Central Illinois. They can get help about real estate in Central Illinois if they want to invest, buy, or sell. So I appreciate you and I will talk to you later.